Hey guys, today I'm going to talk to you about a very interesting study that was recently published that talked all about how optimizing your vitamin D could literally end the pandemic that we are in. It's absolutely amazing. I'm going to go through that study. Of course, you guys know that I'm not just a vitamin D advocate. Of course, I, you know, I'm a huge vitamin D advocate, but there are so many other key components to a healthy lifestyle. Things like good nutrition, good sleep habits, regular exercise and movement, keeping your stress levels under control, getting regular sun exposure, and really, uh, you know, just prioritizing overall healthy lifestyle habits. And so I'm a huge advocate of that. But when it comes to nutrient deficiencies, vitamin D is not only one of the most common, but it can be one of the most detrimental when it comes to overall health. Research has linked vitamin D deficiencies to higher rates of cancer, heart disease, diabetes, um, neurodegenerative conditions like dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, autoimmune conditions, uh, thyroid issues. I mean, a, a whole range of things. Almost every condition out there, there is an association with vitamin D deficiency. Now, what is a vitamin D deficiency? Well, in the medical world, they will say you're deficient if you are under 30 nanograms per milliliter on a 25 hydroxy vitamin D3 test. So if you're under 30, you're considered deficient. If you're under 20, you're considered very deficient. That's kind of the way that it's described. However, research has shown that actually having your vitamin D levels over 50 is really where the sufficient levels, where the clinical research has shown dramatic benefit when it comes to your risk for um, infections, right? So viral infections, bacterial infections, when it comes to your risk for developing cancer, heart disease, right? Or having a bad outcome with one of those diseases, those risks go down when you have your levels up over 50 nanograms per milliliter. Vitamin D is not an expensive test to get. It's something I would recommend getting tested at least once a year, if not, you know, two or three times a year. And of course, we get vitamin D naturally from the sun. You know, our ancestors were um, exposed to sunlight, a lot of sun on a regular basis. Today's day and age, we can live all day long inside out of the sun, even during the you know, hottest and warmest times of the year when the sun is um, you know, coming down. Many people just stay inside. So we're just not getting the sun exposure. We also wear more clothing than a lot of our ancestors did. We're regularly wearing you know, lots of clothing. And we really need, in order to, to optimize your vitamin D from the sun, you really need about 40% of your, your, your skin exposed. I mean, think about it like when you go to the swimming pool or the beach, get your shirt off, right? You're in a bathing suit. That's when you're getting your vitamin D, right? When you go outside for a walk, but you've got long sleeves and pants on, you're really not getting the, the type of skin exposure that you need in order to optimize your vitamin D. So we really normally would get it from the sun, okay? And some people still are, and, and, and praise God for that. I think that's great. It's really the optimal way to do it. But for most people, they're gonna need to supplement in order to get their vitamin D levels up. And after I go through this research study, I'll talk to you about what I recommend as far as supplementation goes. But I wanted to show you guys this study. And so this is out of the Nutrients Journal, 2021, October 2021. It's very recent. And the title of it is COVID-19 Mortality Risk Correlates Inversely with Vitamin D3 Status in a Mortality Rate Close to Zero Could Theoretically Be Achieved at 50 Nanograms Per Milliliter of 25-Hydroxy D3. And this is the result of a systemic review and meta-analysis. So I'm coming back to you here, guys, and I want you to know and understand what a systemic review and a meta-analysis is. This is where they take large studies, okay, researchers look at other large, more observational-based studies or interventional studies, and then they put them together and they combine these studies and then they look at the overall results, okay? So it's kind of a review of the available research to help understand this topic more effectively. Okay, so let's go back to the study. What they found is that, in here are several of the mechanisms for how vitamin D works. Of course, we know vitamin D is amazing for helping keep your immune system under control. What they found, particularly when it comes to um, this pandemic, is that vitamin D3 decreases the production of Th1, which is part of your immune system, Th1 cells, thus it can suppress the progression of inflammation by reducing the generation of inflammatory cytokines. Ken, back, coming back to you here, we know that cytokine storm, right, where we get this kind of mass diffuse inflammation um, is a mechanism, it's a hallmark of the SARS-CoV-2 infection and the, the COVID-19 uh, infection that people are getting. 
So it also helps to uh, improve the regulatory and the T helper cells. And this is important because regulatory and T helper cells help to modulate, balance the immune system so it's more effective. So, you know, you think about like going out and let's say you're, you're, you're um, doing target practice. So let's say you had 20 shots, okay, but you just shot them all over the place as opposed to one or two shots, but you shot them right in the bullseye, okay? You're obviously going to be a lot more effective and a lot more efficient with, when you have one or two shots, but you shoot them exactly where they need to be as opposed to 20 shots that are just being spread all over the place. So when you're vitamin D deficient, you're just shooting bullets everywhere with no real, no real accuracy, no aim, no real strategy. Whereas when you're vitamin D sufficient, when you have enough vitamin D levels, now you're much more accurate, you're more precise, you're more focused, you're dialed in, and you're hitting the pathogens where you need to hit them. So going back to this study, um, it also talks about how vitamin D reduces coagulation abnormalities in critically ill COVID-19 patients. And this is important too, because part of this kind of whole inflammatory process that takes place with COVID-19 is people get blood coagulation. And so they end up oftentimes with coagulated blood in their lungs, causing a lot of trouble breathing. They can end up with heart, you know, having a heart attack, having a stroke or something along the, those lines. And so vitamin D actually helps with modulating that, modulates your fibrinogen levels, your, your platelet levels, so you don't get this over aggregation of blood vessels or blood cells that would end up causing um, too much clotting. So that's another big factor. And going back to this, it says in this publication, they use a meta-analysis of two independent sets of data, so kind of the foundation of it. One analysis is based on the long-term average vitamin D3 levels documented for 19 countries. The second analysis is based on 1,601 hospitalized patients, 784, who had their vitamin D levels measured within a day after admission, and 817 whose vitamin D levels were known pre-infection. Both data sets show a strong correlation between the death rate caused by SARS-CoV-2 and the vitamin D blood levels. At a threshold level of 30, remember, under 30 is considered deficient in the medical world. So they said at a threshold level of 30 nanograms per milliliter, mortality decreases considerably. So if you're over 30, your risk of dying from COVID reduces considerably. If you're under 30, you have much greater risk of dying of COVID. In addition, it says our analysis shows that the correlation for the combined data sets intersects the axis at approximately 50 nanograms per milliliter, which is really what functional doctors like myself have been saying is really the optimal level. Getting it over 50, somewhere between that 50 to 100 range is really optimal for reducing all-cause mortality um, you know, when we're looking at autoimmune conditions, we know autoimmune conditions are better when somebody's up over 50. Um, neurodegenerative conditions, Alzheimer's, dementia, better when somebody's up over 50. Cancer, heart disease, right? Up over 50, they're going to do better. They're going to have a better chance. Now, it's not a panacea. It doesn't cure everybody, but they're going to have a much better chance. And we sometimes even like to see them up in kind of this 70, 80, 90 range, which many clinicians believe is kind of like the kind of optimal treatment level. Um, for vitamin D. Um, but anyways, this study says this suggests that that level of vitamin D3, that 50 nanograms per milliliter, may prevent any excess mortality. These findings are supported not only by a large infection study showing the same optimum, but also by the natural levels observed in traditional people living in the region where humanity originated from that were able to fight down most infections, if not most at all. So when we look at people that are you know, spending a lot of time outdoors, okay, in areas of the world where, you know, uh, researchers believe that kind of where the kind of the, the original people were, um, what, what they found is that these people tend to have vitamin D up over 50, right? They're outdoors on a regular basis. This is optimal, right? This is where it should be. So this is really interesting, you know, having your vitamin D levels optimized. If we could just do a national campaign or an international campaign, a worldwide campaign, to get people's vitamin D levels optimized, that one modality alone can have such a huge impact on this pandemic and our overall health, our overall risk of developing chronic disease. And you know, vitamin D3 is really inexpensive. Obviously, you can get it for free from the sun. You can get small amounts from foods, like, for example, eating liver, 
grass-fed liver, which not many people are eating because it's not very flavorful, but it's super nutrient dense, is a great form of vitamin D. You can also get it in fatty fish like salmon, for example, egg yolk. Egg yolk has vitamin D in it. You can also get it from uh, grass-fed butter or dairy, grass-fed dairy in general. Um, tends to be very vitamin D rich. Now, why do I say grass-fed? When the cows are eating grains, the grass itself, grass, green vegetables and grass, actually harness biophotons from the sun and create energy, right? And so when they're eating grass, they're taking on these biophotons, which have some level of vitamin D in them. And then on top of that, they're also out in the sun, right? And so they're getting more sun. So their milk products, dairy products are going to have more vitamin D levels in them. And meat in general has some level of vitamin D, just very low amounts. You really, it's hard to optimize through food alone. You really need to either be getting regular sun exposure on a lot of your body, or you need to be supplementing. And I always recommend supplementing with about a thousand international units per 25 pounds of body weight. So if you weigh 200 pounds, it's roughly about 8,000 international units a day. If you weigh 250 pounds, about 10,000. You know, if you weigh 150 pounds, that's roughly 6,000 international units per day, right? That's kind of what you're looking at, somewhere in that range. So most people do well with taking about five to 10,000 international units per day. Now, if you're symptomatic or at the onset of any sort of symptoms, doubling or tripling your dose can be really effective, okay? Taking 2,000 or 3,000 international units per 25 pounds of body weight. And for some people, they'll take mega doses. 50,000 international units, um, but only do that for like two or three days, right? You really don't want to do that for much more than three days at a time, uh, and then go back to more of kind of your, your normal optimal dosage. Now, one way that you actually get more benefits from vitamin D is taking a vitamin D that also has vitamin K2. Vitamin D and K2 work together to get calcium out of the bloodstream and into the cells, right, where it can be used, right? or particularly into the bones, where it can be used uh, for, for healthy bone tissue, uh, in the cells, we need it for, for our electro, uh, our electronic gradient to help, um, help with muscle contractions and nervous system conduction. We need calcium. And so we want to get the calcium again out of the bloodstream. When calcium accumulates in the bloodstream, it contributes to arterial sclerosis, right? Or calcification of the blood vessels. So vitamin D and K2 work together to shunt that in. There's also a promising research showing vitamin K2 helps improve immune function as well. So I recommend taking a vitamin D3 with K2 and also getting sufficient amounts of magnesium. Magnesium is one of the most common deficiencies as well. Magnesium helps, helps convert the inactive form of vitamin D that we get from the sun and that we get from, uh, from uh, vitamin D supplements. It takes an inactive form, converts it into an active form. So we need to have sufficient magnesium levels. You can do that by eating grass-fed wild-caught fish, grass-fed uh, animal products, Green leafy vegetables are rich in magnesium. Things like dark chocolate are rich in magnesium. Those are great magnesium rich foods. Avocados, consuming a lot of these types of foods on a regular basis, fantastic for magnesium. You may also consider, especially if you're having trouble sleeping at night or you deal with anxiety, you may also consider supplementing with magnesium because those are classic signs. Daytime fatigue, um, as well as uh, not sleeping well at night, so insomnia, trouble sleeping, and anxiety or restlessness are classic signs of a magnesium deficiency. So taking some sort of good quality supplemental magnesium can also be helpful in this process as well. And when you do that, when you have optimal magnesium and optimal, and, and you're also taking vitamin K2, research has shown they actually need less vitamin D. So your dosage doesn't need to be quite as high. Okay, and you get more activation of the vitamin D. So that is the down low here on this new study. That is what the research is showing with uh, vitamin D that really SARS-CoV-2, COVID-19 is a vitamin D deficiency pandemic. And we can turn it around even with just this one modality. And then if you combine that and you stack it with good quality nutrition, regular intermittent fasting, with good sleep habits, good stress management, you give your body the best possible chance. You create massive resiliency, stress resiliency, pathogen resiliency, and you're able to really thrive in life. So go out and do that. Check out the links below the video too. I'll have links to the study. Um, I'll have links to some, some helpful articles to help you help support you and help, uh, help navigate your journey. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, now is the time to do that. Go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell button. 
That way you get notified whenever we put up a new video so you never miss one of these important trainings. Thanks so much for doing that. Be blessed and we'll see you soon.